Lord Arf. He sat down. The Honourable Member for Wills. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. My, uh, my question is to the Prime Minister. Prime Minister, notwithstanding the social welfare increments implemented by your government and your condemnation of the coalition's credentials on the issue of social justice, there appears to be growing evidence that inequality in Australia is rising. Using income tax figures, Tim Colbatch, in an article in The Age on 21 October, argued that the gap between Melbourne's richest and poorest suburbs has widened. The same sentiments, I might add, are expressed by the Honourable Member for Fraser and academic John Quiggan on page 39 of their book, Work for All. If you actually believe, as you claimed during an interview with Peter Ross on ABC TV yesterday, that the market cannot even produce architectural harmony, why do you continue to eschew interventionist economics in favour of the kind of market-driven policies, i.e. reduced public outlays, regressive taxation, privatisation and labour market Order. deregulation, which, as you correctly state, are an article of faith in the Liberal Party, but, as I was brought up to believe, have no place in the party of true believers? Well, the Prime Minister, I think we're all agreed it's a fairly wide-ranging question. The Prime Speaker. Minister. <laughs> He's, he's not a very true believer, I'm afraid, Mr. Speaker. Otherwise, he wouldn't have ratted and run against the Labor candidate. But, Mr. Speaker, but, Mr. Speaker, but, Mr. Speaker, um, you can always. Uh, um, there's always people invoking the Labor faith. The best place to start invoking the Labor faith is in the Labor Party. And, uh, Mr. Speaker, but I tell you the first thing the true believers believe: they believe in employment. They believe in growth. They order, believe in order. lifting the sides of the national wealth and spreading it to people through employment. I Employment's been the place memories. where traditionally Australians have been able to secure their part of the national wealth. And that's why I've said over and over again that under the accord which the government entered into with the Australian Council of Trade Unions and the trade unions of this country in 1983, under that accord, the, one of the, prin the principal policy was to let the economy grow and not see the proceeds frittered away in a price and wage round, but to see the proceeds go to employment. And that's what happened. As a consequence, we had uh, an average of 4.5 per cent rate of GDP growth through the 80s. We've had, as I've said, 20, 25 to 26 per cent employment growth. And uh, as a consequence of that, we've seen a huge transfer of uh, order, prosperity order. to those people via employment. Now, Mr. Speaker, there are very few governments in the world that have growth and employment as an Member express policy. Very few indeed that have growth and employment as an express policy. We do. And as a consequence of that, there's been an increase in household disposable income in every day in every day that uh, order, every the year that the just wait for a moment. Order. It's hard enough down here without you lot. Order! Those in the galleries. So we'll have them, I'll have the galleries cleared unless silence is maintained. Prime Minister. So, Mr. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, as a, Order. Mr. Mr. Speaker, as a consequence, as a consequence, we've seen uh, a tremendous improvement in the household disposable income rising every year the government's been in office, I think bar one. Member for and, Flinders. and therefore that being that being that along with the transfer payments, the point I made earlier, this huge transfer of outlays to families and particularly low paid people in, especially, the wage policies focusing on benefits for those in the bottom end of the workforce, the maintenance of the safety net for those unable to, uh, to negotiate an enterprise bargain, and of course the tax cuts being directed to those at the bottom end. Now all the analysis, Mr Speaker, all the analysis I've seen of the distribution of wealth in Australia looks at, uh, fails to take into account tax cuts, it fails to take, take into account the, 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 the extent of the, trans, the transfer payments, the transfer payments, and that's why Basically, there's never been a comprehensive analysis. Never been a comprehensive analysis of the distribution of wealth, Mr. Speaker. That is not to say that the Australian, the, the Australian economy isn't isn't so much more wealthier today than it was 10 years ago. And with the internationalisation of the economy, and the fact that we are seeing 
uh, and removal of exchange controls and a free flow of funds coming to and from Australia, we've had world price earnings ratios attached to Australian assets in the stock market. That's meant that people that have had assets and stocks have had their wealth appreciated substantially. That is true. But what's also true? So while there might have been a change in the relative positioning of those low paid and those supposedly wealthy, the low paid have come up enormously. The question is that those in poverty and those who are low paid have come up enormously as a consequence of the government being in office. And these, these uh, partial analysis which we see people on the left take up, including in the Spencer Street Soviet, take them up uh, every uh, three months or six months and run their line. Uh, Mr Speaker, doesn't, doesn't alter one jot the massive improvements which have gone across to uh, which have gone across to um, well Jeff Kennett doesn't like them very much um, either. Um, but the massive improvements which have gone to uh, which have gone to those on low to middle incomes. Now all this sort of uh, you know uh, hanker, hankering after a bit of partial analysis which says which looks at one one level of uh, income or one, one stream of payments, but not looking at the totality of an accord with tax cuts, transfer payments and the rest, is analysis really not worth uh, one's bother with. And that's why the government, when these things comes along, basically flicks them off, because everybody out there who is low paid or has been Order. on the bottom end Order. know that the support which has come by way of this government in raw employment rises in household disposable income, transfer payments, tax cuts, wage improvements, the safety net, all of that, all of that has made a tremendous difference. Um, that's a, no, it's a, that's a chainsaw brigade. Um, um, and, uh, and as a consequence, Mr Speaker, I can assure the honourable member that Order. everything which the Labor Party has stood for in terms of employment and equity for those on uh, Low to middle incomes, including such things as Medicare, uh, increase in oppor educational opportunities with massive participation rates in schools, all of that should go into the mix. And that's, and that's why uh, any analysis which is partial and not complete is really not analysis at all. Now, I like to think that uh, ticking away in the honourable member's mind and heart is basically a lot of regard for what the government has done. I think that's basically true. <laughs> and it may suit him on time to, from time to time to camouflage it. But uh, even though he is an independent, um, we do appreciate the compliments that he's given the government from time to time, even if this particular question was Order. not entirely complimentary. Order.